Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my second to last installment in my Team Up Rewind review series and my second to last installment in the bonus episode segment of this series before we get to the rankings. So as I mentioned in the last video, these two are a bit weird because they're not traditional team-ups, they are more tribute episodes. And this one is Spirit of the Tiger, the Jungle Fury tribute episode from Super Mega Force, which when I went back to rewatch these, I forgot and didn't realize they were back to back. It's kind of like when I was watching the Turtles one and I didn't realize it was so early on. I just remember there being a gap between these episodes, but they're not. They're they're back to back. You go from Samurai Surprise right into Spirit of the Tiger. And Spirit of the Tiger, I think, is a great episode. It's probably my favorite Super Super Mega Force episode, and you know, if you guys know me, I'm not as down on Super Mega Force overall as most people in the fandom, but I agree it's a weaker season, and I think this is one of the only episodes I would consider to be pretty great out of the series overall. And Samurai Surprise, as I mentioned in this review, it felt more like dipping into just a little bit of a cameo, whereas this felt a little bit more team-up-y in, in terms of having more interaction and I think a little bit more meat to it than just getting a little bit of brief advice and a couple little nods to Samurai's lore. So the rangers are at the zoo and they spot this like zoo tamer who is next to the tiger and he's not getting attacked or anything and they're really surprised and Emma takes pictures. She thinks that the logo looks familiar for some reason which is obviously going to come into play later. They see Casey because it's Casey. Casey's the one from this episode, the Jungle Fury Red Ranger. They see him later teaching a martial arts class and they talk to him about his style of, you know, combat and animal spirits and his philosophy and whatnot and it's Jake and Emma that make the connection with him and Jake and Emma that are the ones that primarily team up with him in this episode. And later on they're facing another new powerful general whose power is he can kind of steal their weapons. This leads to that that legendary ranger line from Super Mega Force of I think if there's two lines from these series that just have ascended to another plane of existence are of just legendary lines is a ranger never lets go of his weapon and do you see any tears? Do you see any tears was kind of low-key badass if we're being honest. But anyway, that's the ranger never lets go of his weapon line because they lose all their swords and stuff and Troy's just like, no, we just never look over weapons, guys. And Noah like later is like, we need to come up with a different strategy or maybe look for weapons that might not be able to be stolen from legendary ranger team. He's like, just don't let go. A ranger never lets go of his weapon. That's what she said! So that was really weird and kind of out of character. I feel like there was a couple moments like that within Super Mega Force. Um, th that was just kind of a funny beat of what the other rangers were doing because while that's going on, when they realize their weapons are kind of out of commission, Jake and Emma decide to study under Casey, who knows like a non-weapon combat style and training with their animal spirits, which led to some really nice scenes. And I really liked this and I liked... I kind of liked the dynamic between Jake and Emma. I thought they had good acting and chemistry in this episode. I liked the dynamic of Casey. I liked them taking this proactive role with training with Casey. And they used the snake and phoenix spirits, which are their zords from their Megaforce powers, which I thought was a nice touch. And the more they trained, the spirits came out of them. And I just really liked that. I, I do kind of wish in a way that it was the whole, one of two things actually. I wish it was either the whole team training with them because it would have made more sense for the fight at the end. Or I wish that the, episode like chronological order would have went down a bit different because you only have these two rangers training with him and then the other three call for help later and they go to fight and then they say just use your animal spirits and then they put their training into action and it's just kind of awkward for me that only those two trained but then they're able to just quickly pass on that knowledge to the other five it's a bit nitpicky i know it's power rangers what i wish would have happened if they didn't have all five rangers training is maybe have like the other three go into battle one more time and lose go back to the base and then you have pink and black show them what they learned and then they put that into practice at the end. But setting that aside, trying not to be too nitpicky about it, I just really liked the interaction between them and I thought it was a really great tribute to that. And then I like at the end too, when they, they sort of finish their training and their morphers go off, Casey says, aren't you going to answer those morphers? I thought it was a great way to show that, you know, Casey knew who, who they were as rangers. You know, just from some of the looks he gave in the episode, you could tell he knew. And obviously, you know, he knew just from watching the show, but it was just a funny way. And it's kind of a funny line too, just as a ranger fan, like, aren't you going to answer those morphers? I feel like I want to say that to someone when their phone goes off. But then that's when they show up at the end and tell the other rangers to use their animal spirits and they defeat him with the Jungle Fury power, and then when they get in the Megazord, because they sort of unlocked 
the Jungle Fury power by working with him. They use the Jungle Fury finisher. And then at the end, they go to all introduce the other rangers to Casey, and it's just some other random guy. Kind of like that classic thing where, like, oh, did he really exist? Or, no, I swear he existed. You know, he, he helped us, I swear. And it's just kind of funny. And then they see him at the end kind of bowing to them in this little gazebo or whatever. And it was just honestly a really nice tribute episode. Like, this is mu felt much more like a team-up than the Samurai one, even though he didn't meet the whole team and we didn't have team up -y stuff. It had the team-up stuff I care about, because I could care less about who fights over misunderstanding or who stands next to each other and there's an explosion. I like the character interactions, and I really liked the character interactions for Jake and Emma and Casey, and I thought it felt very true to Jungle Fury, and I also really liked Casey's character in this. It felt very in character for the evolution of his character, because his whole storyline was kind of about him going from rookie to master, and that's what the whole evolution of him in the show was about and then here we get to see that further evolution and I felt like it was some really great interactions between the current cast and a legendary ranger but also it, it actually felt like a tribute to what Jungle Fury was and they even though the ranger lets go of his weapon stuff was weird they integrated into the plot well in terms of why they would need to use the specific power so this actually I think was a very solid episode that I actually personally really enjoy but what did you guys think of this episode let me know in the comments as always until next time if like comment subscribe and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can watch my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.